The president announced today the United States would improve its capability to defend against potential missile attacks launched at the country and its allies. Nick Schifrin was at the Pentagon for today's announcement. Since the end of the Cold War, the U.S. built missile defenses primarily to counter rogue states. Today, the U.S. expanded the program's ambition. Our goal is simple to ensure that we can detect and destroy any missile launched against the United States anywhere, anytime, any place. My fellow Americans. President Trump's Tonight, words echo President Reagan's from 36 years ago when he launched the Strategic Defense Initiative that imagined shooting down nuclear weapons from space. We could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. Today's Missile Defense Review calls for space-based sensors and to study the possibility of space-based interceptors like lasers aboard satellites. U.S. officials say the new policy responds to new Russian technologies, including a hypersonic missile a Russian animation showed speeding around missile defenses. China is also pursuing hypersonic and advanced cruise missiles, said Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan. These threats are harder to see, harder to track, and harder to defeat. To our competitors, we see what you are doing and we're taking action. In order to counter North Korean or Iranian missiles, the review reiterates plans to build 20 additional U.S.-based interceptors. It calls for the advanced F-35 to be able to shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles and for arming drones with lasers. President Trump called it a dramatic policy shift. So are President Trump's plans to build up missile defense capacity necessary and realistic? We get two views. Joe Serencioni is president of the Plowshares Fund, a foundation that seeks to rid the world of nuclear weapons. And Rebecca Heinrichs is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. Welcome to the news hour to you both. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Joe Serencioni, I want to start with you. Uh, I want to separate the report, which, which we have here, uh -huh. from what the president said. The president said, we will ensure that we can detect and destroy any missile launched against the United States anywhere, anytime, any place. Is that a good policy? No, it's not. And it's very different from what the report says. The report itself is fairly modest. That's because it doesn't have much to build on. The existing system we have, a few dozen interceptors in the frozen tundra of Alaska, doesn't work. And the rest of the concepts here are just view graphs and ideas. But what President Trump said dramatically expands the scope of this program, and that makes it dangerous. It turns it from a regional program designed to defeat a few primitive missiles from a small nation to one that's global in scope to defeat any missile anywhere launched by anybody. That would take major technological breakthroughs, decades of work, and trillions of dollars. And the worst part is it stimulates the very thing it's supposed to prevent, a new arms race. What's the response of China and Russia? To cower, to retreat, no. They'll do what we do. They will build more weapons to overcome our defense. That's the dynamic of an arms race. So, Rebecca Heinrich, there's a lot there, but uh, two points that uh, Joe Cincerone had. One, is it dangerous? And two, does it create an arms race? No, missile defense is stabilizing. The, the president laid out the right policy today in characterizing the missile defense review. The missile defense review takes more modest steps in that direction, but it does take care of uh, the regional threats from Russia and China. We have two options. The Russians, the Chinese, the North Koreans, and the Iranians are moving towards increasing their capability in, in the area of missiles. Missiles give them a coercive ability in relative times of peace, and it gives them a military advantage in the event that war breaks out. Two choices. Do we defend against those particular threats or don't we? And this missile defense review that the president laid out and the talk that he gave gets the country moving in the right to get the right direction to have a more muscular missile defense architecture. So Joseph and Cerrone, there is new hypersonic capacity yes. from Russia and China and new advanced cruise missile technology from both these countries. What's wrong with creating missile defense to defend the United States against them? So ask yourself why they are pursuing those programs. I'll tell you what Vladimir Putin said a year ago when he introduced these programs. He's doing it because of the missile defense program. He told U.S. officials in the Bush administration that if you pull out of the anti-ballistic missile treaty, which Bush did in 2001, he was going to be forced to develop weapons to counter any defenses. It takes decades to, to develop those weapons. That's what he did. Is that unusual? No. That's what we did. 
When the Soviets deployed missile defenses in the 1960s around Moscow, you know what we did? We deployed more weapons to overwhelm their system. That is the dynamic of defense and offense. And you know what? The offense always wins because it's easier and cheaper to overwhelm the system than to build these complicated pie-in-the-sky systems that never, it turns out, work. Rebecca Heinrichs, you're shaking your head. Missile defense is, has broad bipartisan support. The combatant commanders that, are, that oversee these different areas of responsibility support missile defense. It's now being integrated into our offense-defense mix. So the idea that they don't work is simply silly. We deploy them today in the regional context. The ground-based mid-course defense system that protects the homeland against North Korean ballistic missiles, um, there's great confidence in our combatant commanders that oversee that. Um, and, and so they've five out of six of the last tests um, have been successful of the kind of ballistic missile interceptors that are deployed today. So this is a system that protects Americans. The Russians deploy missile defense because they want to protect themselves. The United States' response should be to protect the American people, our deployed forces, and our allies. Uh, I want to get to the space aspect yes. of, of this review. Um, and uh, what the Pentagon announced today was uh, a study into space sensors yes. uh, to detect missiles all over the world, and also research into space interceptors, basically shooting down missiles from space. So one, uh, has technology advanced since 1983, uh, and is this something the U.S. should pursue? Just Sensor now? technology has. We already have systems to detect any launch anywhere. We've had it since the 1960s. And sensors are getting better and smaller. That's great. But interceptors, putting something up in space that would be able to maintain in space for decades and would work on a moment's notice, no, that is still out of reach. But you know what? We don't have to have just have this debate on here. What the Congress should do is commission an independent technical assessment of these technologies. Let's see what's real. The technology, the independent assessments we have so far warn that these things won't work and they'll be extremely expensive. Just to defend against North Korea from space, for example, the National Academy of Sciences thought that that would cost $330 billion for a simple regional defense if it could be made to work. Let's have the facts on the ground, and then we could decide whether we want to buy any of these weapons. So, Rebecca Heinrichs, is space technology too expensive, and will it actually work? No, it's affordable. And there's two different things you have to take a look at. First, it's space sensors. We do not currently have in place space sensors that can provide birth to death tracking of missiles. Meaning from the from the launch until it actually hitting the start. Which is what you need, because we can't populate the planet with enough ground-based and sea-based sensors to actually see these missiles, especially the kind that hug the Earth and fly five times the speed of sound, hypersonics. And so we need to have space sensors. That's going to be, give us our biggest bang for our buck in terms of improving the overall system we currently have in place. The other piece of the puzzle is more controversial, and that's what the President talking about space based interceptors. If we're going to intercept missiles while they're boosting, which is the best place to intercept a missile because before they can release decoys and countermeasures, you got to hit it in its boost phase. The best place to do that from is from space. And so we're going to take a look at this. The report says we're just going to study it. We're going to study it. We're going to see what we need to do to move the technology in that direction and see if we can, we can move in that direction. And I think that that's a realistic option for the American Okay, people. very quickly because we've only got one minute left. 30 seconds to you both. If missile defense were to work, is it a good idea? Oh, I would love to have an effective missile defense system. Who wouldn't? But I would also love to have a cure for cancer. I'd like a really good light beer. But some things are beyond our technological capability. Missile defense against ICBMs is one of those things. Missile defense is stabilizing. It gives the United States increased deterrence credibility, and it should be part of um, how the United States thinks about deterring our adversaries in the event uh, that deterrence fails to give us the ability to uh, fight and win. Okay, I think we'll have to leave it there for both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joe Cerencioni from Plowshares and Rebecca Heinrichs from the Hudson Institute. Thank you so much for your Thanks, Nick. Thank you.